This short animated video explains the basic concept of normal distribution. We'll also look at the empirical law of 68, 95 and 99 along with some characteristics of normal distribution or the standard normal distribution. We'll also look at some relevant examples and in the end we will have some quiz. So don't go anywhere else. Just sit back, relax and enjoy this video. Some of you have already seen this curve. We call it the normal distribution or the Gaussian distribution because it was named after the person Carl Gross who was instrumental in its development. So what is this normal distribution? Normal distribution is the most common and widely used distribution because of its relevance to many human characteristics like height and weight. So all these height and weight of the parameters that we have are normally distributed. So the normal distribution is basically a symmetric a bell shaped distribution. Why bell shaped? Because it looks like a bell. It is symmetric about the mean mu where the center line represents the mean of the distribution and this represents the standard deviation that is the distance from the mean. It extends from minus infinity to plus infinity. So the two tails that we have at the end of the normal distribution, it extends to infinity and never touches the horizontal axis. The property of normal distribution is that the area under the curve, that is the total area under the curve is 1 and half of it is 0.5 and 0.5. So no matter what is the value of your mean mu and sigma standard deviation, the total area under the curve remains 1. This curve has a single peak meaning it is unimodal and not bimodal or multimodal. Because it is symmetric about the center, its mean, median and mode are the same values. The shaded area under the curve here is the probability that x lies between a and b. So that is the probability under the area. But one thing to note here is that the the probability of any individual value is zero here. The shaded area under the curve is the probability depends upon the value of the standard deviation. So if it's like 0.5, 1 sigma, 1.5 sigma and 2 sigma all depend upon the value of the standard deviation sigma from the mean value. 3 sigma rule or the empirical rule or the 68, 95, 99 rule. So this rule states that almost all the observed data will fall within the three standard deviations denoted by sigma and mean mu. That means 68% of the population is within the one standard deviation of plus minus one sigma. So that means 34.1% on the left side of the mean and 34.1% on the right side of the mean. Similarly, if we have 2 plus minus 2 sigma from the mean, that means 95.4% of the population will fall within this plus minus 2 sigma. And plus minus 3 sigma, 99.7% of the population will fall under this category. So this is the 3 sigma rule, empirical rule or the 68, 95 or 99 rule. So what is standard normal distribution? So the normal distribution can be transformed to standard normal distribution by the formula z is equal to x minus mu by sigma where x is equal to random variable sigma is equal to standard deviation, mu is equal to mean and z is equal to the number of the standard deviations from the x to the mean. 
so the standard normal distribution is a normal distribution with mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1 so in the z distribution the z score tells us how many standard deviations away from the mean each value lies so any normal distribution can be converted into standard normal distribution by turning the individual values into z scores so we will look at this with the help of some examples now let's take the first example what is the probability that the height of student lies between 150 and 170 centimeter when the average height is 160 with standard deviation of 10 centimeter the lower limit here is 150 upper is 170 and average is or mu is 160 with sigma of 10 centimeter we apply a standard normal distribution formula we calculate z at 150 and z at 170 by putting the limits value of mean mu and sigma now we calculate the bell curve we put the values on the bell curve for that we need to have the z table now we know for z1 uh, area under the curve is coming as 0.8413 now if you look at the entry at the top it says that table entry for z is the area under the standard normal curve to the left of the z value so in this case we know the half of the bell curve is 0.5 so we'll subtract 0.8413 from 0.5 and we'll get 0.341 that is the z value at 0.1 now we know that other end is also symmetrical so we that is negative so we will put the value as minus 0 0.341 now that is the our limits so for getting the likelihood of between 150 and 170 we have to add these two things so when we add we get 0.682 that is the 68.2 percent I hope you can recognize that the earlier when we talked about the deviation from the mean using one standard deviation we have 68 percent of the population this is the example for that let's take another example here uh, what is the probability that a student taken at random will require between 550 hours and 650 hours to complete a training when average time taken is 500 hours and the standard deviation of 100 hours so here the lower limit is 550 upper limit is 650 average 500 and standard deviation of 100 hours if we put the all these in the standard normal distribution formula we get 6 calculate z at 650 we get 1.5 we calculate z at 550 we get 0.5 now put it putting this into the z table we first put the values in the bell curve so at 1.5 z value we get area under the curve as 0.9332 we already talked about the area under the curve is symmetrical 0.5 so we need to subtract that from 0.5 we get z value at 1.5 as 0.4332 now for z value of 0.5 the other half for that we need to have uh, calculate from the z table we get 0.6915 again we need to subtract it from 0.5 we'll get 0.1915 now we need to calculate the area uh, the area between 550 and 650 so in that case we need to subtract between the 150 and 0.5 so we get 0.4332 minus 0.1915 that is 0.2417 that is 24.17 so this is the probability that student if taken at random will require 
between 550 and 650 hours to complete a training. Let's take a third example here. Uh, what is the probability that the student taken at random needs less than 580 hours to complete the training? So in this case, our upper limit stands at 580, average and 500 standard deviation of 100 hours. So uh, we put it into the standard normal distribution formula where 580 minus 500 that is the average divided by 100. We get Z at 0.8. Let's put it into the normal distribution values, the upper limit and the mean value. And we go back to Z table. For Z of 0.8, we get area under the curve as 0.7881. So again, the entry for Z is the area to the left of the Z value. So in this case, our Z value stand at 580. So everything that is to the left of 580 is the area under the curve. So in this case, we get 0.7881. So that is our probability that the student taken at random that needs less than 580 hours is 78.81. Now let's have a quick check to see how much you know about normal distribution. For that, we have a small quiz with three questions. You can share your answers in the comment section below. First question, normal distribution is symmetric about what? Variance, mean, standard deviation, and none of these. Second question, area under the standard normal curve is 0, 1, 0.5, infinity. Question third, in case of normal distribution, which is true, mean equal to median, not equal to mode, mean not equal to median, not equal to mode, mean equal to median, equal to mode, or none of these. You can leave your answers in the comment section below.